Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In our everyday life, we find around ourselves certain ailments which we observe that are not caused due to some pathogenic organisms, infections or allergic reactions. But we observe that these are the result of defect in the genes. And such ailments are not to be cured by just prescribing some drugs or surgeries. But the possible solution of these ailments may be the gene therapy. So today I am going to give you just an overview of this technique, gene therapy. What gene therapy is? It is the insertion of genes into an individual's cells and tissues to treat a disease, especially the hereditary disease in which defective mutant allele or gene is replaced with a functional one. In gene therapy, there are three options which we can use to carry out this process. The first option is replacing a mutated gene that causes disease with a healthy copy of that gene. The second option is we inactivate or knock out the mutated gene that is causing the problem in the organism. The third option is introducing a new gene that will be beneficial for the organism. Whatever the option we use, there are basic steps in all conditions of gene therapy. The first step is identifying and locating the affected gene in the genome. The second step is making many copies, making identical copies of that healthy gene. The third step is we have to load the vector or the carrier with this therapeutic healthy gene. The next step is the vector has to reach the target cell where we want to deliver our therapeutic gene. The next step is the vector reaches the target cell. Now it has to deliver the therapeutic gene from uh, with, along with its own genome into the nucleus of the target cell. And the last step is the expression of that integrated or that inserted genetic material inside the organism which we want to perform normal. So before uh, going to, into the details of this topic, we must recall in our mind what the genes are. Genes are the part of chromosomes which perform a specific function. How genes perform their specific function? The genes are designed to be transcribed into messenger RNA and the messenger RNA has to be translated into a functional protein and the protein exp uh, shows its function whatever it is to be and it is designed to be. The second option is uh, if the gene is for the non-coding RNA then it will transcribe into the non-coding functional RNA. What happens to a gene that it does not perform? Their changes to DNA are called mutations and this will in turn change the mRNA. If the mRNA is not normal then protein will not be normal and this may change the trait. These mutations are the called DNA novo mutations or the new mutations. These are maybe hereditary or the acquired or somatic. It is hereditary if the mutation has occurred in the egg or the sperm and it will be carried to the further generations. And if the mutation has occurred in the somatic cells, in the normal somatic cells of the body, then it will not be carried to the further generation because the mutation has not occurred in the sperm or the egg. Only that individual in which the mutation has occurred will be affected and the further offsprings will be possibly normal. Okay, if the mutation has a, is a hereditary mutation, then there are three options then that why a mutation is hereditary. It is because the mutation has occurred in the sperm or the egg, any one of them or both. Then the resultant offspring will be carrying that mutation. The second option is 
the sperm or egg was fine but once the egg is fertilized the mutation has occurred at this stage and the offspring will be mutated the third option is egg sperm and fertilized egg everything was normal but once the fertilized egg has converted into the embryo the early embryo goes goes through the mutation the mutation occurs at this stage then again there will be mutation in the offspring okay so there are two types of the mutations that why a mutation has occurred what happens to the genome that a mutation has occurred these two types are gene mutation and the chromosomal mutation chromosomal mutation is when an entire chromosome is added or deleted or part of a chromosome is added or deleted as you can see in this diagram whereas the gene mutation there are three further types base substitution if a single base like we have four bases adenine guanine cytosine and thymine any one of them has been replaced with an abnormal base which, which what was not needed in the sequence of that gene the second is base addition an extra base has been added in the normal gene and making it a mutated sequence the third option is base deletion when a required in the required sequence of this gene uh, 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 an essential base is absent it is deleted then the normal sequence is changed the result of such genetic mutations is genetic the result of such genetic mutations is genetic disorders there are three types of genetic disorders single gene disorder it means a single gene in the whole genome is affected the examples are sickle cell anemia and the cystic fibrosis chromosomal disorders means an entire chromosome is absent extra chromosome is present part is deleted part is extra or added the examples are down syndrome and the cryogenic syndrome complex disorders when a disorder is not the cause uh, is not the result of one gene this uh, one gene one mutated gene but multiple genes are mutated and the environmental factors also influence such disorders the examples are colon cancer and the parkinson's disease here you can see in this diagram if the mutation has occurred in the sperm or egg then it must be heritable and the child's all cells will be affected what is gene therapy vectors vectors are the carriers or we can say a transport system or a vehicle through which we have to carry our therapeutic our designed our desired our healthy gene to the targeted cell so this is a transport system these are called vectors there are two types basic types of vectors these are viral vectors also called as the biological vectors and the non viral vectors and the, these are further divided into physical vectors and the chemical vectors viral vectors as you know that the viruses may be have may have the dna as their genetic material or they may have rna as their genetic material if it is a dna based then examples are adenoviruses and herpes simplex and if it is if it is rna based the, then the example is retroviruses non viral vectors the dna is directly injected naked dna is directly injected to the organism physical approach is we using the mechanical forces to uh, enter the desired uh, gene into the organism the examples are electroporation gene gun sonoporations and etc chemical approaches the examples are liposomes polymers lipopolyplex dendrimers and inorganic nanoparticles liposomes and uh, these nanoparticles are actually uh, the uh, nucleic uh, acid is also uh, carrying the negative charge and you know that the uh, cell membrane is phospholipid bilayer embedded with the proteins it is also carrying the negative charge so there is a barrier of same charges 
and these liposomes these actually neutralizes the nature of the uh, genetic package that we want to insert into the cell so we once we make this uh, liposome package and the polymers or lipopolyplex then it is easy for them to be inserted into the cell of the organism it's viral vectors as we all know that viruses are pathogenic particles they infect the living organisms by inserting their genetic material inside the cells of the host and their genetic material uh, multiply inside the host uh, nucleus and produce many copies of it so scientists have taken benefits from this natural mechanism and they use the viral vectors for the delivery of the therapeutic gene into the target cell before uh, they uh, allow the virus to attack the living organism they change the manipulate the genetic information of the virus so that it so that it may not cause the harm to the host and this uh, virus is no more pathogenic the most important thing is new gene insertion into the viral genome and now this uh, dna is ready and it is assembled again into the virus the virus has pentons pentons are the sites of attachment of the virus to their host once the virus enters into the cell the virus is packaged into the vesicles acidity inside the vesicles increases and the pentons are released this release of the pentons causes the toxicity and the virus breaches to the nuclear pores once the virus is in contact with the nuclear pore the virus disassembles and what enters inside the nucleus is only the genetic material of that virus once the genetic material of the virus is inside the nucleus the uh, it shows its expression and a messenger rna is produced from the genetic information carried by the viral genome from this messenger rna protein is produced and protein is the expression of that therapeutic gene that we inserted into the target cell okay non viral vectors a dna package a gene of interest with cationic dna complexes which have neutralizes the nature of the genetic material so it is directly injected into the blood stream uh, blood stream of the organism once it reaches the liver or the lungs now the next step is inside the cell it is endocytosed this dna package is endocytosed into the cell once it is uh, inside the cell it takes the form of the endosome uh, the endosome then uh, enters into the uh, nucleus and the biodegradable uh, biodegradable material comes into contact with the lysosome and is degraded the genetic information is once inside the nucleus it is expressed and our desired result is shown now whether we use the viral vector or the non viral vector there are two approaches in vivo treatment and the ex vivo treatment in vivo treatment that is called when the cell is inside the living organism it is part of the living organism or the natural system for example here a treatment or the missing gene we uh, pro, we just prepare a, a viral vector uh, here we are using adeno associated virus and then it uh, attacks the organism and when it reaches mostly the target cells are lungs or the liver it shows its effect and the uh, whatever the result we want is we get the next approach is ex vivo treatment it is when the target cells are outside the natural system or outside the organism we take out the patient's stem cells stem cells are pluripotent cells which are undifferentiated undifferentiated and has the ability to be differentiated into different forms into different cells different types of cells so we take out the stem cells from the bone marrow of the organism we uh, uh, prepare a type of culture and we have a vector maybe uh, we use the retrovirus or any or lentivirus or any other 
non viral vector then these vector and these stem cells are in the culture now here this vector affects these stem cells and once the genomic material of this vector is inside this stem cells these stem cells are again inserted into the uh, organism where we want our genes expressions to be visualized applications and limitations of the gene therapy gene therapy has vast uh, applications in terms of uh, cure and treatment of many genetic diseases because genetic diseases has no other cure the treatment of monogenic disorders the disorders which are due to mutations in one gene are cured with the help of the uh, this gene therapy further advancements in this technology can uh, make it possible to treat the aids cancer and other infectious diseases eliminates or prevents hereditary diseases because uh, they are due to problem or defects or mutations into the genes and genetic problems are to be treated only with the gene therapy it could be a poss possible cure of inborn genetic diseases the uh, offsprings which are born with genetic problems can be treated with advancements in this technology still this technology is is it in its initial stages and therefore it cannot be commercialized until lots of research is done on it it has limitations because because it is short lived short lived means that uh, the cell in which the gene has been incorporated must show its expression and the the target cell must be very long lived and second limitation is immune response of the patient the patient shows immunogenicity because the defensive system of the organism takes the vector as the foreign particle and again starts uh, its defense mechanism against it it also causes the vector toxicity due to the defensive mechanism of the organism and another important thing is that multiple gene disorders cannot be treated because we may not be able to realize what the actual mutated gene is responsible for that disorder another important limitation of the gene therapy is ethical issues as the gene therapy uses the stem cells or the embryonic stem cells and there are many manipulations of the genetic information is involved in this technique therefore it has some rules and regulations and legislations imposed on this uh, technology so it has many ethical issues as well here you can find the links of my search especially the pictures I think you all if you like this presentation or this information is of any use to you just like it and share it thank you all